So you feel that Nico is the man to kind of lead, lead, you know, this spearhead this Williams challenge. I mean, obviously, you know, Williams has been synonymous with great driver partnerships. You've had Alan Jones, Nigel Mansell, Nelson Piquet, you know, Damon Hill, guys that have stuck with the team through thick and thin and really kind of brought it to its fore. Obviously, there are rumours that he could go to Toyota. He's been linked with a kind of a last-minute snatch to to McLaren. Is he the guy you want to kind of hold on to and build the team around in the future? Do you think? Yeah, the, I mean, the, the only person who says he's going to Toyota is you, actually, Steve. No, <laughs> no one else says that to me. But. <laughs> But um, uh, he definitely Nico's a, because he's a strong character and he's intelligent. We wouldn't. Uh, Williams is a very you know strong-minded team with Frank and Patrick behind it, um, and all the people that work in Williams are, are like-minded. So Williams wouldn't allow itself to be moulded by someone that they didn't have a lot of respect for. Now Nico is definitely the, you know, a person like that. The first time uh, we, we one of the things that we have inside Williams is actually. When we go and evaluate a driver, we look at many different things. We look at, obviously, how fast they are on the track. Um, how we also have a simulator system that where we can actually drive full full tracks at the factory. Um, and it's incredibly accurate um, in terms of the feeling of the car and all the things that we can change. So we put a driver through that exam. And we also do a written test as well um, so that we can understand where, they're, where they lie technically. Um, and n not one of those points, um, you know, the written exam, for example, uh, an engineer would do very good at, but an en engineers aren't any good at driving cars fast because they, un they understand what happens if you crash them. So, <laughs> so, so you, can't, uh, you can't take one particular point and say, that guy's going to be a brilliant driver. But at Williams, we've developed a system where we, we, can, we identify four or five key points, um, and, and if you tie all those things together, you can see that. Now... Nico, for example, when he sat this written exam that we did, uh, he had just turned 17 years old and he got the highest score ever on this exam, uh, which was pretty impressive. And at that time, he, he was okay in Formula 3, um, but he wasn't brilliant. You know, he was, he was not like Lewis. I think in, when Lewis won the European Formula 3 championship, he won 15 out of 17 races. And Nico won, I think, three, three F3 races, so it wasn't clear that he was going to be as good as what he was. But one thing that you do see in Formula 1 when guys step from sort of 220 horsepower of a Formula 3 car to 750 now of a Formula 1 car, it definitely, you see a transition and a, and a change um, because it's a completely different type of driving style. And when Nico got into high-powered cars, uh, he, he really took a big step when he got into GP2 cars, which were about 600. So anyway, we managed to identify that at an early stage. Going back to your question, Steve, um, I could see that uh, Nico was a guy that was intelligent, intelligent enough to be able to ask to back him.